Hello lovelies, I'm Rachel and I'm a musician, but I do also like to get inspiration from the world of literature. If you know me, you know that I have a very soft spot for Japan, traveling in Japan, Japanese culture, Japanese language. Uh, and many years ago, I did read some Yukio Mishima novels uh, back when I was at university. This is one of the books that I picked up from the library. It is The Woman in the Purple Skirt. It's written by Natsuko Imamura, who is an author about my age from Hiroshima. And I'm expecting it to be quite a lot more modern in style and content than the Yukio Mishima novels that I've read before from Japan, but I'll just read you the blurb. The woman in the purple skirt seems to live in a world of her own. She appears to glide through crowded streets without acknowledging anyone around her. Most afternoons she sits on the same park bench eating a pastry and ignoring the local children who make a game of trying to get her attention. The woman in the purple skirt is being watched. Someone is following her, always perched just out of sight, monitoring which buses she takes, what she eats, whom she speaks to. But this invisible observer isn't a stalker. It's much more complicated than that. So very keen to get back into reading some uh, fiction from around the world with this Japanese novel. So this is the first uh, Japanese novel I've read for a long time. I am not reading it in the Japanese. It's translated by Lucy North. This book did not go at all where I thought it was going to. Generally, I do all of my reading in just like short chunks um, before I go to sleep at night. And that's what I started doing with The Woman in the Purple Skirt. And I read, I think, uh, two or three chapters. It's a reasonably quick read, so I um, got a bit of a chunk read. I did not update after I'd read that because other than just explaining exactly what had happened so far in the book, I couldn't really figure out how to talk about it. Knew from the blurb that the woman in the purple skirt was being observed um, and it's by the narrator who introduces herself fairly early on as the woman in the yellow cardigan. I had some ideas from those first couple of chapters of where I thought the story might go. Uh, events that may unfold from this premise. Um, you know, you know where the story might be headed and none of it was right. I was so far off base with my expectations for this but I was not at all disappointed. When I started reading after that first chunk, um, I thought it was going to take me a few nights to read. I binged the rest of the book in one night because I was hooked. It was a few hours of reading, which is not great for me to ruin my bedtime quite that spectacularly, but that my feeling at the beginning was that it was going to be about the awkwardness of making friendships as an adult and it was kind of about that but it was also about obsessions and stupid mistakes shifting boundaries and all throughout there's these nice little observations you know cultural things in Japan um, the work life public transport um, shopping areas all this sort of stuff oh and if you know the film Amelie um, there's some nice little sort of fantastical scenes that happen in this book that really reminded me um, of that film. I think that that's my main inspirational takeaway is that those, you know, sort of little mundane everyday things, um, they can be the inspiration for something really mysterious and fantastical. You know, the starting point doesn't have to be an extraordinary event. If you enjoy those sorts of things too, I highly recommend Natsuko Imamura, The Woman in the Purple Skirt. If you enjoyed that and you think, gee, I would like to buy that girl a coffee, you can do that on Ko-fi. Alternatively, for as little as three Australian dollars per month, you can support me on Patreon, where you'll get behind the scenes, exclusive content, and support music making into the future. The links are in the description below. As always, thanks so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time. Bye.